What's so McGregor syndrome? It's made up. Well, what is it in the it's confines really of the made-up world? It's really close to MacGuffin syndrome. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a thing that makes 80-year-olds tired a lot. <laughs> Nina, what bad guy, good guy team-up have you chosen to talk about today? So, Brian, I know that when you talk about good guy, bad guy team-ups in the MCU, most people would probably think about Thor and Loki. That's a that's a good go-to example. But I wanted to pick a different MCU villain turned good because while they're only bad briefly, it has really fun ramifications for the rest of the MCU. So my pick is uh, Wanda Maximoff, who is introduced as a villain in Age of Ultron and ultimately becomes an Avenger and then got her own show. So, I mean, she's she's very, very briefly a villain, right? She's working with Ultron to destroy the Avengers. Wanda and her brother realize that uh, Ultron is pretty hell-bent on, on, on genociding everyone. So they get out of there. They join the, they briefly both join the Avengers until Pietro is, is uh, killed in battle. But obviously we get great ramifications of that, which means we get Elizabeth Olsen and the rest of the MCU uh, appearing alongside various Avengers. And then we get WandaVision, which is probably my favorite. It's definitely my favorite of the MCU television shows. I think it's one of the uh, most interesting things the MCU has done in a really long time in terms of how different and, and fascinating it is. And I I loved it when I watched it. I think I'm already ready to watch it for a second time, even though it came out fairly recently, relatively. Um, and so, yeah, even though, I mean, I, and she's not called Scarlet Witch at the beginning, obviously, that's a title share in Slater, but you know, Wanda is introduced in a post credit scene. Remind me which movie is the post credit scene. Is it is it an Iron Man? It was uh, Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. It was Winter Soldier. Thank you. It was not an Iron Man. But, you know, she's very briefly introduced as a very powerful villain. And the stuff that she does to the Avengers when she's right. fighting them is horrifying. Yeah. She's like, she relive your her, worst her memories. Yeah. Fingers. it's That's a scary villain one's power. One's fast and one's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Like just like, she's weird. Yeah. That's her power. Her, she's her weird. power is weird. You know, I think we're all starting to realize she's probably one of the more powerful Avengers out there in terms of sheer you know, magical trickery. So, yeah, I, I didn't know she wasn't a villain for very long, but she eventually teams up with the with the uh, good guys and she becomes a villain of, her, of, of sorts in WandaVision, of large sorts, right. by trapping an entire town in a grief, you know driven fantasy world but her grief prison yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> but yeah i think i think her journey has been pretty dang fascinating and uh, i love that she does not stay a villain and disappear what's cool about this one too is that it mirrors the com like you know all these mcu movies they're all adaptations of comic books but a long time ago i think a lot of comic book fans generally were started to become okay with the fact that these movies were going to take pretty extreme liberties they go Far from the source material right. enough, but keep the spirit. So right. similarly, um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver started out as bad guys. They were members of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants mm -hmm. because they were Magneto's kids. Right, right, right. I forgot that. And so, and then eventually they become Avengers mm -hmm. and they're, you know, testy and they they fight with the team, but that's what all Marvel Comics characters did because that's interesting. And eventually, you know, they've become you know, heroes for decades, but then um, maybe like 15, 15 ish years ago, there was this storyline um, called Avengers Disassembled, where all the Avengers started getting uh, attacked and, and some of them were even killed. And it turns out that this was a manifestation of Wanda's grief over her, her lost kids. Um, and she wound up being the source of all of these, these problems without anybody realizing it. She was causing all these, these terrible things to happen against the Avengers. And then that's eventually what led to house of M where she said no more mutants. And, and they, they referenced that, that in cute little, exactly. very subtle ways in WandaVision, the, the wine bottle and everything. Yeah. So it's, it, I think I'm really glad that you brought that one up because I think that is a really good, it's a great bad guy, good guy team up. And it's, it's easy to, rem it's hard to remember. I, I wanted to say that. Wanda starts out as a villain, and that's kind of what makes her pretty villainous turn in WandaVision, even though she didn't really know quite what she was doing, that much more believable. So I think that's a really good one. Yeah. And yeah, and yeah I just, I love that, like, um, you know, we've talked about the MCU maybe having a villain problem before where you, you get a great villain, but they have to disappear because they have to be vanquished. So turning her into a good guy ensures Wanda's longevity and means that she gets to be a huge part of the MCU for the foreseeable future, which I love because I think 
she, she has really grown on me as a character and has become one of my favorite Avengers. Yeah. And, and you know also that she can probably turn bad. Exactly. You know, yeah. There's the a lot of complexity to, yeah, she contains <laughs> yeah. multitudes. We love, we love that. She contains <laughs> multitudes. <laughs> yeah. We love to see it. So yeah, that's my pick. Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch. That's a good pick. Tom, what was your pick for the best good guy, bad guy team up in movie history? Brian, Nina, I'm going to paint a picture for you. Ooh, okay. All right. It's 1997. Nina, you're about seven years old, right? Yeah. It's weird how quickly you knew Brian, that. Brian, yeah. you just turned 46. <laughs> 46, yep. And you're both so excited because, uh, because one of the largest motion picture events in, in movie history is about to take place. I think we all know what I'm talking about. Do we want to say it all at once? One, two, three. Titanic. Batman and Robin. Batman, yeah, and, Batman Robin. and Robin. Batman and Robin. I don't think that's the year Titanic came out. Anyway. Starring George. <laughs> never heard of it. Starring. George, but it was. It was. It was. A, it was a Titanic feat. It was a. It was a terrific movie. And uh, George Clooney as Batman. You got Chris O'Donnell mm-hmm. as Robin. Yeah. It's a beautiful film that ends with one of my favorite uh, villain hero team ups of all time: Batman and Robin's butler Alfred. Uh, get something called McGregor syndrome. And the only person that knows how to cure it is Mr. Freeze. What's so McGregor syndrome? It's made up. Well, what is it in the it's confines really of the made up world? It's really close to MacGuffin syndrome. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a thing that makes 80-year-olds tired a lot, <laughs> if you can believe it. Like It's a dark world, Gotham, mm. but in this world, so Alfred just gets sleepy and need to lie down. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's like, no. He can't bring his his billionaire client who he raised <laughs> tea. as yeah. much dinner anymore. <laughs> Amazing. It's too much gazpacho for one old man to carry. Yeah. And uh Amazing. So they 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 punch Mr. Freeze into into curing this old man of his disease. They're like, hey, we've got this old guy who makes form-fitting clothes for his niece in the basement. <laughs> And we cannot live without him as a constant presence in our Incredible. life. Incredible. And so Mr. Freeze uh, uh, saves his life. They they, uh, they inject this old man with glow sticks. <laughs> Doesn't he deliver a line too? He says, "Take two of these and call me in the morning." Right? Doesn't yeah, he say yeah. That? He, oh my god! He says exactly that while he hands him two glow sticks uh, <laughs> that will that will cure the old man. Uh, Sounds like an SNL per- sketch. That's, uh, the, <laughs> This is not, I know this is real, but, like but it they, doesn't sound real. They appeal to his humanity, right? Because they're like, that's what your wife had, and that's what our butler has. And that's exactly like, right. I was, he's like, all right, Batman, you win this time. Here's some medicine. Take me to jail. The the, the best part about this, this deal, uh, to my eyes anyway, is that uh, afterwards, Batman says, we're going to have your frozen wife sent to the prison that we're putting you in. Uh, so that you can keep doing science to her. So there's kind of there, there's kind of a quid pro quo thing that happens. Uh, the implication does also seem to be that they get it hooked up so that Mister Freeze gets to keep his cool, like killing people armor uh, while he's in jail, and then uh, be in the same prison cell as Poison Ivy. So they essentially they they said like we've watched you kill dozens of people, uh, but we're just we're going to set it up so that you get to share a prison cell with this person that you want dead. Mm-hmm. It's not because a super heroes. realistic movie. I, yeah, I don't I think that's how the prison system see, works. I don't for see one. that. I don't know. <laughs> not sure. Everything else about the movie really stands up to scrutiny. I think. But <laughs> how do you feel about uh, about Batman's suit? A very popular one. <laughs> Nipple. I have no problems with it. <laughs> no notes. Perfect. <laughs> no notes. No, it's exactly right. <laughs> uh my 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 second choice would be uh also Batman but at the end of the Snyder cut when they do the uh the flash forward to the future and he teams up with the Joker and there's just no reason for it. Yeah. Besides I think my theory is that Zack Snyder spent the last like 3 years telling everybody Batman's going to say the F word in this movie and then he it was like 3 weeks before his homework was due <laughs> and he was like oh I forgot to put in the Batman F word. He was scene. like he was like we're shooting the scene tomorrow and I don't and I don't have anything. <laughs> It's like 3 a.m. the night before. I need half a gallon of grease paint and some rubber gloves and Jared Leto's phone number. Yeah. Perfect. That was my other favorite. 
Uh, Brian, yeah. you've been uncharacteristically quiet about this whole good guy, bad guy situation. Talk I've been quiet like, this whole time. On. Everybody misses me heart. talking. Yeah. Yes. I miss you talking. Same. Well, so we published an article on Looper about this very topic. Um, and some of the, the choices on there are pretty good. Um, we've got Batman and Catwoman teaming up in Dark Knight Rises, Rocky and Apollo Creed, Rock 3, Terminator 2, when the Terminator, the T-800, right? T-800 comes back from the first movie. He's an unstoppable killing machine in the first movie. Comes back in the second movie, and he says, come with me if you want to live. The villain has become the hero. It's great. It's one, it is really one of the best bad guy, good guy team ups. Um, and we've also got in this list here um, where Luke and Darth Vader team up at the end of Return of the Jedi, which. Great choice. Yeah, it's a good choice. But when I saw it, I was also kind of like, do they team up so much as Luke is getting zapped by lightning, right? This in this move where the emperor is doing this and then they post production put lightning bolts on his hand so he was doing this in front of the camera oh that wasn't a practical effect they didn't know oh my god they didn't actually, actually lightning. shoot lightning the bolts. more yeah, you know can we get a star wipe now and then and then darth vader picks up the emperor spoilers and throws him down spoilers this movie came out in what, 1980 that's 30 something <laughs> yeah. years ago um, spoiler alert right so so for that me sounds that's, like a team up to me it's so it they sounds don't like they're necessarily both on team don't electrocute that guy Right. So yes, you're not wrong there, but at the same time, it's not like they're fighting together. They're not, you know, they're not like back to back. They're like shake and bake. Let's go. Like that doesn't happen. It's more that, you know, Darth Vader redeems himself once, does one really good thing right. and then dies. One parentheses, one I mean, good thing ever. The, <laughs> yeah. the good thing is killing a guy like right but i mean it's also murder. like he, he basically kills like like the living embodiment of evil in the entire universe so that's pretty good if you're gonna kill one more guy you pick a that's a good one to redeem yourself and you save your son in the process and i've gotten away from the point i think a better star wars good guy bad guy team up is from the last jedi when kylo ren and ray team up to fight those that's a good one guards now Snoke, he does. yeah and they you know kylo ren kills snoke through subterfuge in that scene and and in the moment and even afterwards i was really frustrated because i was like i really wanted some backstory i wanted some more explanation as to who this guy was who snoke was and we never got it but ultimately it fits in so well in my opinion with the theme of the movie of getting rid of the past forging a new path forward and yet at the same time um, well, anyway, the fight that follows is really good. It's visually so really good. exciting. Yeah. It's a great fight scene. And whatever Phenomenal. your feelings about that movie might be, whether you like it, whether you hate it, you can't deny it. That's a great fight scene. No, oh, I love that pick. And I'm a Last Jedi apologist, partly because I do like that it tries to subvert a lot of what ha what Star Wars has set up in a really in a way I find interesting. And also because I love Ryan Johnson and think he's like Yeah, I think. I Amazing. think it's a great movie. Yeah, um, I don't want to. I don't want to get too far into right. the Last Jedi. You're right. But that is a great. That's Goodbye. such a visually striking fight scene. I love that fight scene. Huge highlight. And what's what's so good about it too is that afterwards, Kylo Ren is like, "Join me. Right. We're we're right. going to do this thing." And she's just like, "No, right. have you been paying attention? <laughs> right? Have you heard and anything then, I've said? Yeah." <laughs> and then he's an even worse villain for yeah. the rest of the movie. Yeah. And so it's a it's a really great moment where the bad guy and the good guy team up because their interests align for just this brief window mm -hmm. of time and then gone again. I love that one. So I really I really like that scene. Well, um, and I love I that you picked. Others. Sorry, yeah. just quickly. I love that you picked that one instead of them like ultimately teaming up in Rise of Skywalker and then terrible. getting together, which I hate, which I hated <laughs> very terrible. much. Thanks. I hate it. It's I don't so want bad. it. Um, and it's so it much better. Work. It doesn't work at all. There's when they kissed, I was like, what? There was no payoff yeah. for that. Like no Kiss, setup, nothing. And then die. Yeah. I hate, <laughs> hate. So I'm really glad you picked the better team up of those two characters. Yeah. It's much better. It's so much it's, better. It's, but wasn't the whole point of the, the new trilogy that if people do kissing, they disappear. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> Anybody that kisses in the Star Wars movies winds up gone in the in the last trilogy. Luke this is a fact. Disappears. Luke, is Leia, Leia. Leia disappears. Han and Leia. Rose's Han? screen oh, yeah. time. Han does kind of disappear. Rose. Yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> so they're playing by the uh, the Fan. they're playing for by the, 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 the rules movie. that um, Jamie Kennedy Kissing sets people up makes and scream. Go away. Yeah, <laughs> they're playing by scream rules. This Kissing is... people <laughs> makes you go away. <laughs> a great lesson S- for the speaking children. Speaking as somebody who was very into Star Wars in uh, in elementary and junior high school, I could say that this is probably the lesson that people need to hear. You'll get cooties and you'll turn into a force ghost. Yeah, that's how it works. Everybody knows exactly. So, so wait, are you saying that Obi Wan kissed Darth Vader and that's why he disappeared? I'm saying, I'm saying that you just quoted all of my Catholic sex ed classes that I ever had. To take. And Brian, in answer to your question, I'm sure there's a fan fiction out there that features that exact plot. I'm sure. Yeah. Of it. As soon as I said it, I was like, "That I'm sure that's out that's there." That's definitely out there. Over. Yeah. Um, I had a few other picks yes. that I wanted to run through of real because. Because this is one of those things where when you see the topic, like good guy, bad guy team ups, you're like, oh, there's got to be a million of them. And it's actually surprisingly difficult to find ones that work, that are memorable in good movies, mm-hmm. you know? Um, one of them that made me really excited was um, in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey when they team up with death. Yeah. That's a really That's a good, good one. Because uh, he's definitely a bad guy at the start. Mm-hmm. He's here to take them to the underworld and they trick him and then he joins their band. Right. It's fantastic. Jurassic Park, when the T-Rex shows up to save everybody. Mm-hmm. Does that Great count? Great choice. I, that counts. Right. The T-Rex is okay. not a good guy. And then he is a bad guy. <laughs> he is. And then he is. <laughs> and then he is. She, right. she That's right. is They're lady guy. dinosaurs. Damn. Um, Women dinosaurs can do anything. Neither. You're right. I need to be more cr- Ma- progressive in my dinosaur beliefs. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. Right? When Nux... Okay. Nux is one of the war boys, and he's just he's got Max as his blood bag. Yeah. And he's ready to die, shiny and chrome. He sprays his oh, face. Amazing. And mm-hmm. eventually he joins up with the good guys and helps them, and he sacrifices his life to help them uh, on their way. That's Nicholas Holt, uh, so right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Great. His best role. Great role. <laughs> amazing. Um, and the last one I picked was The Rocketeer. Um, oh, when the yeah. when the gangsters the, find uh, out they're the working gangsters. for Nazis, yeah, and so they're they just up like with the cops to shoot the yeah. Yeah, there's this great line where he says, "I may not make an honest buck, but I'm 100 percent American, and I don't work for no two bit Nazi." <laughs> and then the the FBI shows up and they start shooting the Nazis, and then the gangsters and the FBI are shooting the Nazis together, and there's just this great moment where the FBI guy and the gangster guy look at each other and they're like. And then they keep shooting. Yeah. Us. Wait, let me ask you guys if this one qualifies uh, Sirius Black in, in Harry Potter. Because for the whole third book and film, you're like, Sirius Black is the villain. He killed uh, a bunch of people with one curse, blah, blah, blah. Not only is he Harry's godfather, but that has one of the best twists in that entire series, which is that Peter Pettigrew has literally been there the whole time masquerading as a pet rat. Yeah, I love that one. That's that's a that's, that's more near like and dear a to my heart. Though, right? yeah. Well, no, but I mean, <laughs> but he's, yeah, he's, he's clearly he's he's made out to be the antagonist for for the film. So like for for the the large part of the story of the book and the film, you think this is the bad guy, this is the villain. You know, if you have read books before or no movies and you're an adult, we haven't. You can reasonably suss out that it's probably a big misdirect. But if you're a child, for whom these books and movies are made, you might actually think that the that the bad guy is the person they're telling you is the bad guy. When I guy. first read that book, I was probably 12 or 13, and I remember being like, whoa, that I did not see that coming. Yeah. What? It's Mind the rat? Right. Yeah. yeah. No, and then <laughs> Harry literally teams up with Sirius to, before yeah. the book and film even end, to try to good bring stuff. someone else to justice. I love it. Love to yeah, see it. That's a good one. That's a great one. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for watching. We love you. Goodbye.